So it's about half ten in the morning here in the UK, and Bleach 506 The Fire 2 is already out. Let's just have a look here. Oh my god. So, it starts off rather unexpectedly, with Colonel Sanders taking a pretty massive hit from Shun Sui. And he says, oh, it's very good, it's admirable that you can all raise your morale so easily. But you're getting one thing wrong. And um, we then cut back to uh, Yamamoto saying, it's been a thousand years, Ju Harbuck. Uh, I came here to annihilate you. And it comes back to Colonel Sanders, and he says, our boss will defeat your boss. And it's basically a my dad will defeat your dad moment. And uh, Colonel Sanders then gives her the correct assumption that many of us got that you're not the only ones whose morale will be raised while your bosses fight. And then almost instantly, three stern ritters, Nana Nanajkoop, Asnoat, and the one presumed to be Busby, all appear in the air above Yamamoto. And it's for this one reason that I have rather mixed feelings about this otherwise awesome chapter. Nanana says, it's pretty brave of you to come here to fight our boss all on your own. As Noak says, it's the end. And Busby just says, die, old fart. Oh, and this ends just how everyone would expect it to. Shinsui says, yeah, okay, we got it wrong. And then suddenly there's a massive plume of fire. Colonel Sanders looks over in shock. And, you know, and Shinsui says, but with Yamaji, that logic's not going to work. Oh, as not, why did you have to run in? We see him with his eyes rolled up and he's torched, smoke and everything. Um, so basically Yamamoto has scorched the three Sturmitters who attacked him. I really hope they're not dead. I really hope it's sort of a Trey Beastie-ass situation all over again. Because I don't understand why Kubo would go and just kill off the person who de who defeated Byakuya. That that's perfect emotional development for Renji and Rukia for them to come and fight him later on in the arc. He seems really weird for as not to just be torched like that. And that's it for him. Uh, same goes for Busby as well. He's he's one of the ones who was sort of penned to be one of the top Sternwitters. We haven't seen anything about him yet. So that seems really strange for him to get killed off as well. No one really cares about Nana and Ajkoop. He probably just ran away from his fight with Rose, I can imagine, because Rose seemed perfectly all right at the last chapter. So I really hope they're fine. Admittedly, Yamamoto is really, really angry to hell right now. But something on the next page gives the illusion that they might be all right. So Buck says that they're fools and it's their fault for meddling in his, in his fight. Yamamoto then gives him a bit of a nasty glare, and Buck says, your eyes are like you have something to say. Yamamoto then strikes him with a massive surge of fire from his sword. Uh, the Blonstermitter cries out, but Yamamoto says that you've not changed, Buck. But the wicked way you look down on your men will also end here. So that kind of makes me, uh, that, that gives me a little bit of hope that uh, maybe Yamamoto's found it in his heart to spare these poor Sturmritter, who get looked down upon so horribly by their master. But Buckbeard just comments that you got old, Shigakuni. Uh, and it, he also says that Yamamoto lets his anger get the, get the best of him, just like when they were younger. We get a little picture of Yammer and Hayori, but back when he was uh, a dude with black hair still. And uh, he just brushes it off, pish posh, nonsense, strikes Bark with another massive blast of fire. And then what I think happens, though it's a little bit unclear, is that we see Bark's Quincy cross, and it's a bit like a medal. Uh, really fancy looking as well. It's got the usual Quincy Cross and a star in the middle of it, then another star behind it. It looks really cool, actually. It looks very, you know, wartimey. And from it, he, he summons his sword. Blocks your auto slash. Massive surge of fire. The blonde stone just seems to be able to cope with all this Reiatsu flying around. Yamamoto says that he finally took out your sword. And we see that Bark's got his sword. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. It, looks, it immediately reminded me of Ichigo's Fullbring Blade when he got his weird Spider-Man suit thing going on. But uh, just a cooler version. It's sort of got kind of ar army wings as the hilt. It looks pretty cool. But Buck's also taken quite a bit of damage on his arm from where Yamamoto slashed him at the beginning. Bark then says, you talk as if you were waiting for me to do this. Uh, and Yamamoto says that he was indeed. There goes my phone. Yamamoto then says he'll smash your, his flesh, blood, sword and soul into tiny, tiny pieces. And the flames suddenly disappear. The flames from his sword just vanish, and Buckbeard's like, well, what's going on? The flames have just disappeared. And then, oh my holy Christ, Yamamoto says, Bankai Zanka no Tachi. And that is the end of the chapter. Jeez!
Come on, Kubo. So that's it for, for Bleach 506. When you think about it, not a huge amount happened. That has not got fried. Yamamoto went bank, though. This promises to be the longest fight Yamamoto has ever had, and possibly the most awesome as well. In fact, it probably will be the most awesome. I still don't think it'll end well for um, Yamamoto. The fact that he's already gone bank is, you know, a testament to that. Um, his Bankai, it's called Zanka no Tachi, so it doesn't have Ryujin Jacker in the name, which, you know, is not that unusual, because a lot of uh, Bankai's we've seen don't have that, but it means Long Sword of the Remaining Flame, and it's a, if this is his Bankai, then it's a sort of beaten up looking sword, quite old, with just a single trail of fire coming off the top of it. So he's sealed the flames inside his sword for possible maximum offensive capabilities. Which is interesting in that it's, if it is his Bankai, and this is not, maybe this might just be the release for, of it, but if it is his Bankai, then it's similar to Ichigo's in that it compresses itself. So Ichigo gets a super speed boost, whereas it looks like Yamamoto might get a super offensive boost, which means that, you know, he's probably going to start cleaving limbs left and right. But uh, obviously, Juho Bark's not going to go down that easily. Um, I thought this chapter was absolutely amazing. I was a little bit torn over the fact that As not got fried, but you know, it made up for it really with Yamamoto showing his releasing his banker at the end. This is something that you know, if you've been reading Bleach for a long time, it, this is almost in the legends. You know, Yamamoto banker is not going to happen. No one's going to force Yamamoto to use his banker. We've seen his Shikai like can nuke villages. Why the hell would he use his banker? Here it is, Zanka no Tachi. Stay tuned for Bleach five oh seven because we're going to see that baby in action. And it's going to kick some serious ass. Whether he's going to survive this fight or not, probably not. Probably not going well. But Juhar Bark versus Yamamoto is probably going to be one of the, hopefully one of the most epic fights in Bleach history. What did you think, though? What do you think about the three Sturmitters who met an apparently untimely demise? Do you think they're, you think they're still alright? I hope they're alright. What do you think of Yamamoto's Bankai Zanki no... Uh, Zank, yeah, Zank, Zankano Tachi. Do you think it's a bit like? Do you think it's a compressed bank line like it goes? Do you think it's going to give him super offensive capabilities, or is this just the release sequence? Are we going to see something, an actual bank I form next chapter? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave me a thumbs up, guys, and I'll probably see you at the weekend for a fairy tale review. Later.